is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Um, I'm in here, Key West Waterman World Headquarters, kind of on my day off, quote unquote, self-employed. You don't really have a whole lot of those. You just do work you don't get paid for. But um, in the last video, I asked you guys about YouTube profit and what you wanted to see more of. I have a windy week this week, so I'm not fishing. And I took a few days off just because I'm trying to catch up with everything that needs to be done running a business. But um, the two most requested things were, well, not two most, the answer for the most part was yes, you'd like to see the YouTube profit. Some of you said no, which I understand, but quite honestly, I really don't have anything to hide. My main income is uh, being a charter captain and that's information I probably would never share. Actually, I would never share, um, but the YouTube for the most part doesn't make that much money, so I have no problem sharing it. And as of right now, it's kind of just little drops in the bucket here and there to keep uh, the business running that money doesn't come into me the youtube money goes back into the business as well um so i'm happy to share that information and the other thing was um a more in-depth walk down of all the blue water gear the breakaway the slip tips the flashers all that stuff i made a video sometime back uh, i think it was a couple years ago and talked about it but the, the channel's got a lot bigger since then uh, and instead of just sending that link to you guys i figured i'll make another one and make it a little more um in depth but I'm in the office here doing all kinds of stuff and doing paperwork. This is for the commercial side of things. I have to fill out reports for every commercial trip. Um, I have to fill out a ticket for every single charter that I run. Fuel used, time we left the dock, time we got back, how many passengers, how much they paid, how many fish we caught, how many fish were released. It is a nightmare um, to do all this stuff. But it's part of, part of the job, so I have to do it. But... Let's jump in. I'll show you just a couple of these. I, I, you know, I don't want to get too crazy in depth with this because I don't know who all cares. Um, but I'll give you enough to hopefully scratch an itch. Now, YouTube kind of, the way they pay you is kind of strange. It's per thousand views, but every video is different. So, I'll just kind of go through a couple of these. You can see I've got quite a few videos. Historically, I think we're close to a hundred um, at this point in time. We didn't start making money. God, I think it was a year, year and a half in. Um, but this one's actually only been out for two days, so I'm going to show you uh, last week's episode. So I'll go to analytics. And this shows me my total views. Um, i got watch time and hours, how many subscribers I gained from it. And that is my revenue to date. I released this video, let's see, December 5th is when I released it. And this shows you kind of the growth of profit. And that's not every day. That's six days in, I had made $230 on it. Five days in, it was $214. So $15 that day. Um, and typically, the way these work, the first couple days, um, it does really well. And then it kind of putters out. Um, here's one with a decent amount of views. 35,000 views. Analytics. And you can kind of see it's that same trend. It jumps, this little chart is my views. It jumps and then kind of plateaus. So in the beginning, they make a decent amount of money. Um, and it hasn't always been like this. This is the best the channel has ever been. For a while, I was making $2 a day, $5 a day. Um, it's finally starting to make a little bit of money. And like I said, it just goes back into the business, keeps everything running. So we are 23 days in. This one's made $358. Um, and they all kind of seem to have that same trend. I'll go a little farther back and show you. So this one, 20,000 views. It's made $200 in that time. But pretty much the majority of that money was right at the beginning. And then they kind of, like I said, they putter out and they make a dollar a day, 50 cents, some more, some less. Um, so hopefully that scratches an itch there. Hopefully you learned something. Um, if my idea was, and when I mentioned this, I don't know if I translated it well. My idea was, as a commercial breakdown, I'm telling you how much the boat made from the harvesting the fish and all that side of things. Technically, I'm filming on those commercial days, so this profit can be accounted for on that day. Like, it is income generated from that same trip. Yeah, it's not fish sold, but and that kind of was my idea. So, if, if you'd like to see that, I don't mind sharing, like, every it's every Monday, 6 p.m., I release an episode so the next week i can tell you 
what that video, the previous week's video made in a week. So again, I don't mind sharing it. Maybe if it starts making millions, I'll hide it from you guys, but um, let's run downstairs. I wanna show you guys some of this blue water stuff. I kind of go back in a little in depth. Like I said, I made a video a while back about it. Wind's blowing. I don't mind sitting at home when the wind's blowing. I don't like getting beat up either. Um, but I made a video a while back and it was a little sloppy. It was kind of when I first started YouTube. Um, so hopefully this one isn't sloppy, but tuna, what are you doing? So I've got all this stuff laid out. These are kind of my go-to setups. Um, I will start with the way the float system works. Um, so this has been kind of a common question is how this breakaway works. And I had some people ask me, why don't you hook it to the gun? Um, some people do that. I prefer not to do that because we're using these float systems to still have a way that we are attached to the fish with as least amount of drag as possible. And this is mainly for Wahoo. Uh, other blue water stuff, there's different setups that are preferred. Wahoo is kind of our go-to down here when it comes to blue water stuff. So I don't like clipping the gun to it because the gun creates more drag. Um, the buoy's fighting the fish. You want that buoy to go through the water smoothly. Um, and kind of that's, that's why I don't do that. Um, and these are considered breakaways. And what that means is your typical spear gun, you're gonna be anchored somewhere. This is a reef gun. You can see this is anchored here. That does not come off um, this line guide. So when I shoot, everything comes undone, the line, the shafts and everything, but it's still connected there. If you have a reel, it comes through that line anchor and it is attached to the reel. It does not come, break away from the gun. Now blue water, because these fish are strong, the Wahoo are big, they're really fast or powerful. We don't wanna to have to fight that fish by hand every time. So this is one of my blue water setups and you can see same thing, line, gu line guides here, or the line anchor, it goes around it, but it is not secured to it. That line comes back and I'm attached right here. And there's several ways to do this and I'll show you all, these are kind of my favorites. Um, I'm trying to do this video in one take so I don't have to do any editing, but um, anyways, this is just a muzzle bungee. All this is is keeps this line taut. This is literally just bungee from West Marine. See, it's loose. Comes back to that line release. When I pull the trigger, th these line releases pop forward. And I'm going to demonstrate here in a second. This is a, this is actually from Neptonics. This is a float line adapter, which these are great. Same thing. The float just clips into that ring. It's attached to there. Bungee keeps it tight. You shoot and everything kind of comes away or comes off. So let me do it on this one. This is my breakaway attached to a tuna clip. There's a loop clipped in there. Big long line, hundred feet to a buoy. Wahoo swims by. There's no bands on this. So everyone relax. I pull the trigger, that pops forward, breaks loose. Free. This obviously happens in a lot faster motion underwater. Free. Everything is away from the gun. Still clipped on there. Float line to the buoy. Now the fish fights that buoy instead of having to fight that fish. Um, and it works the same way with all of these. Um, hopefully that answered a couple questions. Now these lines, uh, this is Dyneema, 1.8 millimeter. This knot right here is just a bowline. That's all that is, is a bowline knot. Um, I do the same thing there and I do the same thing here. Uh, if you don't know what a bowline is, look that up online. Here's actually a, that's before it's cinched down. Um, but I like, I like, I, I kind of switched it to using the Dyneema shooting line. Sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place. There's a lot going on out here. Um, I like the Dyneema. I don't mind mono either. The, the main reason I use this is for reef because a lot of times you have to cut the line if the fish is in a hole. Um, honestly, that's looking a little worn. That guy's probably ready to be changed, but it works just the same with mono. And then I'll get down to our slip tips. Tune is playing with my line. So this slip tip and uh, your typical spear gun, you have a flopper. This video is gonna be pretty comprehensive all the way for beginners to people just getting into blue water. That is a flopper. That's all that is. Um, that's kind of your run of the mill reef setup. Uh, I use these for Wahoo, any type of softer, bigger fish. Don't really need them for mahi, you can use them. Um, and what a slip tip is, is 
it just sets on here. It is what it sounds like, it slips. It slips right off. It, there's nothing holding it until you load your gun. So you shoot, shoot it, runs through the fish, the momentum or the when it loses momentum and stops this just falls off and toggles this way so it's it's through the fish there's no way that that'll ever ever come out if it's you know holding through uh, a decent amount of flesh now how we load that and get that to stick on there sorry i'm kind of all over the place but hopefully this is i'm trying to film in i should have a cameraman so once you load your spear gun bands you take this line and you tuck it into the bands and that is what holds that taut. Obviously it needs to be flush, but I'm doing this with one hand. So it sits like that. I shoot the gun. The forward momentum keeps the tip on there. And it's simultaneously, you shoot it, these bands are releasing. This releases out of the bands. It goes forward, it hits the fish, it falls off and it toggles. That is my slip tip. We love those for blue water. Um, they make cable versions of that. Uh, that's actually Spectra. I think it's rated like 1400 pounds. This is cable. Um, if, if it gets real sharky, sometimes we'll switch to cable because yes, that spectra is very strong, but if you get shark, a lot of sharks around and because it's through the fish and exposed, if a shark eats the fish, they're taking just that tip with them. Um, and that is an expensive tip. I have probably a 15 of these in a graveyard, uh, just the mounts and the rings. Um, and let's go over throw flashers. There's a bunch of different versions of these. A lot of people are making them and selling them now. Um, I literally get this mirror vinyl off of Amazon and I get a whole bunch of PVC, cut it in little short strips and wrap it around. And that's literally all that is. PVC, mirror vinyl. These are the flashers that we are using in the water. This is the cheap version of a float. Uh, I made these, I just literally took it to a router and I cut out a little hollow spot there or you can use these. These are great too, Same kind of same thing, but this one obviously is manufactured and that's what it's actually for. Um, I'm trying to think what else? Oh, someone asked if I make my own wishbones. Yeah, I tie all my own bands, tie my own wishbones. As far as replacing stuff goes, there's not, someone asked me, how long do you let stuff go before you replace it? There's not really a time. It depends how much I'm using it, what it looks like. Um, it just, you you kind of got to just eyeball stuff like, I'll be completely honest with you, these right here, so what I did was, I don't tie my bands to an actual formula. Some people have a 350% stretch formula. They measure it out from the band, the muzzle to the, the shark fins, and then they have what the band can handle to stretch. I kind of ballpark it. Uh, you can see how there's a little bit of, uh, just kind of, that's starting to go. See how there's a little bit of opening and kind of I don't even know the word for that. It's worn right there. You can see the exposed rubber on the inside. So what I'll do is I'll actually take that out. I'll cut it right there and retie it. That's what I did on this side. That's why these look nice and clean and these are beat up. I just alternated them. And a lot of times, this is the cheap person in me. Um, I take the bigger band. So from like this gun, the band on this gun is huge. It's a lot longer. It's like 35, 33 inches, 32 inches, something like that. So it only gets worn right here. So when that goes bad, I'll cut them short and then I'll retie them on a, a gun like this that has shorter bands. Just saves me money. I go, I have 12 spear guns, something like that. So the amount of band material I go through gets, gets fairly expensive. Um, same thing with the wishbones. If these get worn, you know, I just, I just change them out. Um, and then this is my shooting line. So it's the same material. It is Dyneema. This is just white and yellow. So after this gets worn out, gets a couple nicks in it, I'll cut it up in short pieces and then I'll use it for uh, my wishbones and then kind of just recycle everything that way. Uh, let's get down to the float lines. I've talked about these before, but I'll talk about them again. And all of this, this is not necessarily the right way. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. Um, over years of trial and error, this is what works best for me. This is what I like. Now I have two setups that I'll shoot for Wahoo. One is gonna be a bigger float. This is my favorite float. Uh, Koa makes this. Um, other people make similar floats, but Koa is the first one I got of inflatable, and I just I like it. I like the way it performs. It has been through a lot, a lot of Wahoo along with this one, but um, these are my tried and true methods. This is a hundred foot float line from Neptonics. Uh, a lot of this stuff is actually from Neptonics. These uh, muzzle bungees, the Dyneema, the band material. Uh, there's wishbone beads in here. This stuff, like pretty much a lot of this stuff. 
that I get is from neptonicsystems.com. I'll put a link in the description for that, but um, Neptonics makes these float lines. This one actually stretches a little. It's not a bungee, but it stretches just a smidge. A bungee, in my in my opinion, stretches two to three hundred percent. I think that float line stretches about 150. Uh, and the reason I like it with this big float is because, again, Wahoo are very soft. Um, so if this doesn't stretch, this float is going to put a hell of a lot more pressure than this float will. So this is a 100 foot stretch float line. I think it stretches to 150 feet. Um, this buoy has a lot more stopping power. This buoy will go underwater a lot easier. So if with this buoy, I don't mind using a solid float line. This one has very, very little stretch, if any, in it. This is a 75 foot float line, 75 or 100 feet. Um, I personally like 100 feet because a lot of times when we're drifting, if a grouper comes up to the flashers or a mutton, they're deeper, they're 70, 80 feet. If I have a 75 foot float line, I'm gonna swim down uh, and I'm gonna bottom my float out. So I personally like a 100 foot float line at least. Um, but for a lot of my beginners, I don't mind using a 75 because they're not diving that deep when they're first trying blue water. But hopefully that makes sense. This one is foam filled. And I think I spoke about all this in the previous video, but there's a lot of new subscribers here. Um, this one is foam filled, so it will not compress. This one has to be filled up with a compressor or a hand pump. Um, if you're traveling, just keep that in mind. I fill this up with my compressor here at the house. Um, and both of these are great. They're both great options. It just kind of depends on which float I'm using goes up with which uh, float line I'm using. And again, there's a hundred different ways to do this. This is not the exact only way to do it. I can put that Koa float on that white line and if I hit the fish right, it's not gonna tear out. It's not gonna be too much pressure. Um, this is again, I'm repeating myself, but this is just kind of my preference. Um, but other than that, I think for the most part, that's pretty comprehensive with everything with these blue water guns. Um, I mean, this guy's an open track. It's a little different, uh, which what that means is, uh, the shaft lays on top of the gun. This is an enclosed track. So you can see there's the shaft is, uh, down inside the gun. There's a, a hollow track out that I don't really doesn't really make a difference to me as long as the gun shoots straight i don't care which is which and again i'll show you i shoot that breaks away everything comes out and you come up with just the guns um so that is blue water and youtube income so um as always mondays 6 p.m new episodes um, keep sending me guys ideas. Let me know what you think of this one. If you guys want to see in the beginning of the episodes or whatever, what last week's episode made, I don't mind putting that in there. Maybe if it starts making a crap ton of money, I'll keep it to myself. But, um, as of right now, it's really not making much, so it's not a big deal. I don't mind sharing it. Um, but other than that, if this is your first time watching, go check out some of the other spearfishing episodes. I will tag a blue water episode at the end of this. So you can kind of see all of this stuff, uh, in action. And other than that, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care and be safe out there. See ya.